Hi, it's Bruce, and welcome once again to my Colorado Rocky Mountain Lab. And uh, today I'm playing with the uh, an Echo Model 731 integrator. It's um, really a uh, Qlom counter. Uh, as far as uh, exactly which industry this was used in, it's hard to say. It could have been used in... Um, batteries uh, to determine the charge and stored charge uh, rate of discharge and all that kind of thing to uh, determine the efficiency of the batteries and uh, know when they are fully charged and discharged and so on um, the other area that uh, I know these things are used in would be in um, electrochemistry uh, various things that I am totally unfamiliar with. Uh, I barely got through chemistry in college, but um, uh, that would be things like plating or um, <clears throat> uh, reactions um, uh, that are dependent upon uh, charges and so on being transferred between uh, chemical elements. So, I know that it's found uh, there because I found numerous papers uh, published by prestigious institutions where this unit was used to do that. So anyway, I, it caught my eye. It wasn't expensive, really. Uh, it was under $100, I think, uh, total. And um, uh, they didn't know if it worked. In fact, uh, they, sus they listed it as not functioning. Um, but I knew... Uh, from the little bit that I had researched um, Coulomb counters, that uh, there would be a uh, uh, current measurement circuit in here and then an integrator that integrates the current measurements over time uh, to determine the, um, uh, the Coulombs uh, that are actually being uh, passed through the circuit. Uh, and then you had to have a counter that would display it and so on. So thought it would be a fascinating piece to play with and it hasn't disappointed me. Well, to understand uh, <clears throat> the principles uh, for how this thing is used most often, uh, you, would, you would do something like this. You'd note that energy, which is measured in joules, is equal to volts times the charge in coulombs. But what's the charge in coulombs? Well, the charge in coulombs is equal to the summation or integration of the derivative of the current over time uh, times the derivative of time. And if you had um, uh, a constant current, not a changing current, then you could simplify that integration and just make it current times the time in seconds. So um, if I had one amp uh, for and I supported it for one second, that's one coulomb, which is the charge. If I had uh, one amp for 10 seconds, that's 10 coulombs. So for 100 seconds, that's 100 coulombs. Uh, if the current is changing, then you've got to be able to describe the change in relationship to time and then integrate that over the time. That's advanced mathematics, maybe uh, just something to know that uh, you'd have to break up all of the little elements uh, of current over that amount of time and, and multiply them out and uh, for how many seconds each each current was there and then add them all up to get your total total uh, amount of charge. So if you have working with constant currents your joules becomes equal to volts times the current times the time in seconds. So an example of that would be if you're charging a battery with 10 volts at 1 amp for 100 seconds the number of joules of energy that you've collected in the in the battery is 10 volts times 1 amp times 100 seconds, which is 1,000 joules. A 
killed you. Now, what if you're discharging that battery now, but at a different rate of current, keeping it constant, but we're going to go one-tenth of the charge rate. We're going to go uh, 0.1 amp of discharge. Well, the one kilojoule was equal to 10 volts times the 0.1 amp times some questionable amount of time. And just using a little bit of algebra, we rearrange it, and we have one kilojoule divided by 10 volts times 0.1 amp is equal to the amount of time, which then becomes a thousand divided by uh, 10 times 0.1, which is one. A thousand divided by one is a thousand. So I'm going to be able to go for a thousand seconds. So if nothing stops me, if there's no uh, breakdown, uh, some energy loss that's not accounted for, or whatever, everything works perfect, I could last a thousand seconds. And that's basically what this. Uh, Kilometer does is um, it's a Coulomb counter, so you've got various ranges of current that you can put in here, and as it sees, it'll then take a look at the current that's coming in, uh, and it will multiply that current times the amount of time that it existed, and then it will sum it up and provide it on this counter. And it doesn't matter that the current is changing. This thing will, will look at a segment of time and say the current in that segment of time was X. And the next segment of time is, is Y. And the next segment of time is Z. And it's going to add X, Y, and Z and come up with the total amount of, of charge that was there over the uh, what, three seconds or whatever it was that we, uh, we ran X, Y, and Z. So you get the number of coulombs, and uh, knowing that, you can uh, go right back to this uh, little formula, and you can determine uh, the amount of energy that's been stored uh, in whatever your medium is, and work with it. Um, so that's kind of the principle for uh, uh, use of the coulomb, coulomb counter. Um, first thing I had to do, I, I couldn't find any background information on this thing, uh, no manuals, no spec sheets. Uh, so I'm kind of on my own playing around with it, but um, first thing I noticed is that I had inputs on the front panel, and my range switch uh, in current, uh, 10 microamps, 100, 1 milliamp, 10 mil milliamps, 100 milliamps, 1 amp. Then they drew a line and they got one volt. Uh, I thought that's interesting. Uh, I have a start, stop, and a reset button. A display for the counter, and then it, it can be displaying in coulombs or millicoulombs. And an overrange uh, light over here. So, so yeah, it's uh, an Echo Amil. 731. It's a Coulomb counter slash integrator. Um, looks like the uh, the build date was about 1981. Um, workmanship looks excellent. The uh, level of sophistication is uh, relatively high. I'm going to guess that uh, a unit that looks like this probably ran eh, $5,000 to $7,000, somewhere in there. Um, <clears throat> since then, I mean, there's been a lot of work done on uh, Coulomb counters and kilometers and so on uh, because of all the uh, interest in batteries, uh, uh, electric vehicles and such, and I, you can get a, a very good de meter these days for probably a lot less, but that doesn't take away from, uh, from this unit's sophistication and, uh, and maybe it's usefulness even. I mean, we're talking about uh, surplus cost here.
Um, so we just need to look at it and and say what what could I maybe do with this? So we're going to try a few things. So my first reaction was to uh, try and pass some current through the inputs on the front uh, panel and that was totally ineffective and I, uh, I measured the resistance on the front panel and it was quite high. Um, don't know exactly how high it, my meter wouldn't register it so uh, uh, we're talking you know maybe 10 to 100 mega ohms or more. Um, so that made me think well maybe the inputs on the front panel are only for the voltage which they have on the dial here. And when I took a look at the inside of it I noticed that um, the wires that came in let's see if we can get some light on this subject the wires that came in from the front panel are very small uh, so certainly I'm not going to be trying to uh, pass much current through those small wires so yeah it was uh, I then figured it must be for voltage so I put myself on the one volt range and I started playing around with voltage between zero and one volt and, and lo and behold I saw my counter start counting up and I was able to start stop and reset and so on so I can count voltage up to a volt uh, if I have any voltage on there uh, that's fluctuating it uh, apparently integrates that voltage but okay so well I mean that's one scale one range actually on the scale and I've got six other ranges that are current related so so I took a look and I, on the back panel is an input jack it's marked input and it has some fairly hefty wires attached to it two of them and uh, then it brings it up and I see that the blue wire the heavy-duty blue wire attaches to this braid of uh, wires that goes around and almost everything is connected to that and the orange wire comes up front and connects to a specific spot on the um, range switch and I decided okay most likely we're looking at positive and negative inputs for current. That's why the heavy wire and uh, that's why we bring the blue wire back to this area that everything's connected to on one side which I assume was the negative and the uh, the positive came in on the front. So, so I attached a couple of gator clips to it and then brought those gator clips to a um, to a 220 uh, Keithley 225 current source so it's a precision current source I can set it on milliamps I can set it for one milliamp input and I can reasonably be assumed that I'm gonna have one milliamp passing uh, to this unit and if I've connected it right I should see this thing start counting so we go ahead and we try that so uh, bear with me here I'll try and do this one-handed reset start and I'm gonna connect right now and we see that we're counting now that's very interesting I'm on a 1 milliamp scale I got 1 milliamp coming in and uh, and I'm seeing myself uh, increment about every second here so let's time that if this thing is really uh, integrating the current over time <clears throat> which is what I think it does in order to get coulombs then uh, I should be able to use my watch and in 60 seconds my 1 milliamp input should produce uh, about 60 milliamps or 60 milli coulombs uh, on the output okay so we're set up on the tripod I hope I've got this thing set up so that you can see what's going on and uh, what I'm going to do when my watch uh, hits a, a whole number I'm going to go ahead and connect to this thing and then we'll wait 60 seconds and I'll disconnect I'll try and do it as you know evenly quickly as possible and then we're going to see what we have on the display okay 
One, two, three, go. All right, that was five seconds after. And I'm going to wait until I get to five seconds after again. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, so we got 60.77 millicoulombs. Well, at 0.77 is most likely my connect and disconnect time. I'm going to assume that this thing is actually doing what, it, what it's supposed to do. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do some, some things with that knowledge. Um, if I was to increase to 10 milliamps, and I can uh, change my current source to provide that 10 milliamps. I can reset, I can put this thing in start again, and uh, let's go ahead and 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, just connect it up. Okay, I'm only going to go 30 seconds this time. We'll save ourselves that anguish. 25, 4, or 26, 7, 8, 9, 30. Okay, so we got 0 0.3068. Um, and this, in, this is Coulombs this time. 0 0.3068 Coulombs. And the 68 again, probably my connection and disconnection time. Um, but that makes me feel pretty good because this was at uh, 10 milliamps on a different range and we still pulled uh, a reasonable uh, result out of this, 0 0.30 coulombs. If I'd have left it in for uh, 60 seconds, uh, we would have double that, so 0.6. So I think it's sort of obvious that um, if I let this thing go for 100 seconds, that I should have pulled out one Coulomb, exactly. Or, you know, with the connection and disconnection error. But it would have been one. And that would have been the same thing in the 1 milliamp or the 10 milliamp uh, position, so... So I think this thing is working, which is very promising. And I think to myself, what can I do with it that I would like to do? Um, I'm not, uh, at the moment, doing anything with batteries, studying the uh, charge and discharge of the battery. But I got to thinking about something here. Uh, I've got a number of very large capacitors that I have no way to measure. Um, that is, I have no instrument that is meant to measure them. They're way out of range. You know, things like 20,000 microfarads, for instance. And, uh, and I know that uh, for a capacitor, uh, the charge on the capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the voltage. And the capacitance, then, is equal to the charge on the capacitor divided by the voltage. Where th the uh, units are uh, in coulombs, volts, and farads. So, in essence, um, if I am able to determine the number of coulombs um, of charge that's been placed on a capacitor and I know the voltage on the capacitor at the same time I should be able to determine its capacitance no matter how large this thing is as long as I'm uh, staying within the range of my uh, kilometer so let's go ahead and set up an experiment where we uh, we attempt to do that be kind of fun give me a minute Okay, so what I've done now is I've connected up a 20,000 microfarad capacitor. And uh, what I have right now, I've got a, oh, 
I can take this lead off because I'm not using it at the moment. I have a voltmeter lead uh, measuring the negative side of the capacitor. I've got a power source connected to it uh, that's coming in with about a volt on it. Um, the capacitor is basically going to be connected in series um, to the power supply and the uh, the kilometer, which is a an ammeter, which essentially is a short circuit um, that measures current, uh, <clears throat> is going to be one of the leads uh, going back to the positive side of the um, power supply. Now, when you go to charge a capacitor, initially it's uncharged, and when you first connect it up to the power source, it will pull the greatest amount of current into itself, the, the largest current will flow into it, and you'll get this massive influx of uh, charge into the capacitor. But as it does that, the, the current will start to drop off and, until the capacitor is almost fully charged, at which time uh, you don't draw any current, or you draw very little, and you've uh, you filled the capacitor up with charge. Um, I do not want to overload my input with too much current. And if I don't do something to this capacitor to limit the current, I almost certainly would do that. And I would go off into overrange, which uh, would kill my uh, experiment. So uh, if I have essentially a 1 volt voltage coming in as pow from the power supply, uh, and I want to limit myself to one milliamp, then I want to have a thousand ohms in the circuit, and that will guarantee that uh, if my capacitor was shorted, I would draw no more than one milliamp. And then as the capacitor fills up, uh, and I'm not shorted, uh, I would see that the uh, current draw would go down from there, so I could count from that. And my current limiting resistor would be 1,000 ohms. So I found a 1,000 ohm, in this case it's a 0.01% resistor. Uh, not that that matters too dramatically, but uh, I'm going to uh, use that to, to feed into my uh, meter, and then I'm going to come out of the meter and I'm going to connect to the positive side of, the, of this capacitor and complete the circuit, and we'll start seeing that we count. And we're going to count until the voltage uh, equals the power supply voltage, which time we shut down, and, um, and we should be able to read the number of coulombs of charge that we put into the capacitor. And then knowing the coulombs, knowing the voltage, we can determine the capacitance. That is the premise. So let me, uh, let me put you back up on the display of the, uh, of the unit. Hopefully we can see that when I go to do the video. All right, I'm going to go ahead and connect up. Let's make sure that that uh, capacitor is fully discharged. That's another thing. All right. Okay. And we're going to connect up now. And we see that we're counting. I can't uh, easily swing you to the voltmeter right now, but I will read you the voltage. We're right now 0.5 volts and rising. So we're halfway to our 1 volt reading. And we've already got uh, 13 millicoulombs plus, 14, 15. We're at 0.75 volts, 0 0.8, 0 0.85, slowing down a little bit, 0.9 volts, and you can see that we're not uh, spinning anywhere near as fast on the uh, kilometer reading.
So anyway, I would think that uh, an improvement to the shorting of the battery of the capacitor uh, and the unshorting of the capacitor and the application of the of the um, voltage to complete the current to complete the circuit. If I could rig up a switch mechanism that would do both, that would disc, you know, unshort the capacitor while at the same time then going ahead and and applying the um, the current through the kilometer, that I would uh, probably maximize my uh, accuracy here, minimize my error. Um, to me, that would be a, a big thing. Okay, I think I'm going to go ahead and call it. We're so slow right now in, in incrementing in voltage. Um, it's not worth the wait. So, I've got a voltage reading of 1.00128. And we've got 21.12 coulombs. So let's, uh, let's log that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop the process. And we're going to do a little um, calculating. So I have 21.12 divided by 1.00128. In the end, I'm going by uh, multiplying by 1,000, so 10 cubed. And my result is 21,093 microfarad. 21,093 microfarad. That's on a capacitor that was marked 20,000. And I can guarantee you that it was not a precision capacitor. So, but that's pretty dang close. And uh, according to uh, laws of physics and... Uh, and electronics and this should be a good representation assuming that my uh, coulometer is accurate of my uh, my capacitance so 21,093 okay let's uh, let's try one more and this will make this one a readable capacitor and we will compare it Connect the voltmeter, short out the capacitor, reset the meter, the coulometer. Okay, lifting the short on the capacitor and go. 0 0.0047. Okay, hooking up my voltmeter. And I've got 10.02. All right, let's calculate that out. I have um, 0 0.0047 divided by 10.02. Times a thousand. That would be point four six nine zero six. Let's just see how close we are to that. All right, disconnecting the kilometer, disconnecting the voltmeter, removing the capacitor. Let's uh, short this capacitor just so I'm not worried about it hurting my meter. Okay. Capacitor shorted, and let's see if we can get this on here. Okay, I'm going to turn this thing on. I'm going to uh, put myself in capacitance mode.
Connecting one of the leads, connecting the second lead now. I'm going to change my frequency to the lowest I have. There's 100 hertz. And it's giving me a reading of 456.2. And we had a reading of 0.469 that we calculated. But now ours, our reading was at DC. This reading is at 100 hertz. Um, just curious, if I raise my frequency of measurement to 120, I go up to 455, 456. If I go to uh, 1K, I go to drop down to 454.8. If I go to 10K, I go to 450.3. So, so as my frequency goes up, my capacitance measured is dropping slightly. Uh, so, in reverse, as I reduce my frequency, I'm increasing my capacitance. So, and there could be, uh, at DC, between 100 hertz and DC, we could rise. Uh, let's go back to uh, 100 hertz. We're getting 456.2. And uh, if I was to drop... You know, maybe I pick up 457, 458, I don't know, something is close. Anyway, my uh, coulometer calculated 469, which is interesting. Let's try one more. Let's, uh, this time, we'll do... Uh, We're going to do a 220 microfarad capacitor, electrolytic. I'm getting a reading of 220.8 microfarad at 100 hertz. 220.8 microfarad at 100 hertz. And it's marked at 220. That's interesting. Okay, I got this 220 um, microfarad capacitor shorted out right now. And I've got uh, a power supply, roughly 10 volts coming through a, um, a 10,000 ohm resistor <coughs> on the uh, 1 milliamp range. So I should be good. And I'm going to remove the... Um, short and I'm going to connect up the kilometer we see that we started running our voltage is already up to eight nine volts we're almost complete 9.8 or It's getting really slow now. We're just about complete. We're reading uh, 243 right now. 96. When we go and divide that, it's going to reduce the capacitance reading just slightly because we're over 10 volts. 98. All right, it actually went down a little bit, so we're we're essentially uh, we're there. So we got ten point zero zero nine seven nine eight. We're at two forty three. So point zero zero two forty five divided by. 10.0099 and I'm getting a 00024 times a million 244.75 so 245 is our reading 
we got 245 microfarads for that capacitor at DC. We had 220 at 100 hertz. Hmm. But we are getting readings, and the readings are uh, reasonably close to what we'd expect. Yeah, it's interesting, huh? Okay, the reading is at 10.010, and we've got uh, 248 right now on the uh, kilometer. But it dawns on me that I should be able to reverse this thing. So if I disconnect the power supply positive, and I connect myself negatively here, I maybe should start decreasing. There we go. So I'm discharging the capacitor through the kilometer, and I should see myself come out to zero or, or some residual that is in question. Point zero 0.08. I've got 13 micro, uh, millivolts left on the meter, 10 millivolts. 9, 8. Seven, six millivolts. Five point zero millivolts. Four point seven. I think we're probably at the end of our. Uh, well, that was we just changed again. So. 0 0.05 coulomb, millicoulombs. We have 3.0 on the uh, voltmeter. 0 0.04. 0 0.03. We have 2 millivolts on the voltmeter. Okay, we are coming up on 1.9 millivolts, 1 1.8, 1.7, 6, 5, we're still at 0 0.03. Um, millicoulombs. Voltage is dropping still, but slowing. We're at 1.37 right now. So I don't, I suspect we're not going to get much more difference on the uh, kilometer at this point. We just don't have enough current to even really measure, uh, especially at this range. So, I don't know, too, if I changed range now, whether that would screw things up. Might. So our residual is 0 0.03. Uh, 0 0.03 divided by the reading that we had of... Um, 2.45 that's like a 1% uh, difference 1% error so yeah I'm seeing a difference of about 1% uh, here so that's interesting made a uh, capacitance meter uh, out of a kilometer, Col coulomb counter, or a kilometer, I guess, either way, coulomb meter. All right, thanks for uh, watching. Well, if I do anything interesting more with this, I'll get back to you.